Great. All okay. right, it's five o'clock on the uh, March 3rd, and I'd like to call the airport commission uh, to order. Mark, you wanna go ahead and do the roll call? Sure. We have um, Michelle Bond. Here. Mayor Brar. I do not see the mayor. Uh, Alder Burke. Robert Present. Burke. John Halleck. Yes. David Lorman. Present. Kevin Munson. Here. Okay, hey, right. And Alder Fusard indicated in advance that he would be absent today and perhaps the mayor will join us in progress. I have not heard from him about his plans. Okay. So, and staff present are Rich Mori and uh, some guy named Mark Opitz and Josh, I believe from the bureau is here as well. Great. If, assuming that's who the Josh is. Okay. All right. All right, great, thank you. Yep. Uh, next is the proof of posting and notice. It was posted in accordance with the open meetings law at City Hall. Um, I'm sure Rich posted it at the airport, at and, the airport. We sent it, and we sent it out via our notify me service. And uh, what else do we do? On the listserv too, our city listserv. Okay, thank you. Um, the next uh, piece of business is the approval of the minutes. So I'll give everybody take a, a minute to look at them and then somebody can make a motion. Um, one way or another to approve it or change it. Sure. This is this is Robert Burke. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Hey, Robert makes a motion to approve. Do I hear a I'll second? Happy to second that. David seconds it. Uh, is there any discussion? I'm not hearing any discussion. I'd like to uh, call the vote. All in favor of accepting the minutes, please say aye. 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 Oh, same side. Okay, great. Next is the chair report I've got. <laughs> two pieces of information. Um, one is I sent a letter to the editor last week and got published on, I think Thursday. And I wanted you all to have a copy of the letter. Um, I, th I thought it was, uh, first of all, I'm surprised it got published. Um, and I thought it was very timely uh, with respect to uh, the Common Council taking up um, the resolution for the airport. And so I'm happy that it was published and um, there's an opportunity here to set a few of the, the, few of the record things straight. So uh, that's just for your knowledge and record and also what will go into the public record uh, at this time. Um, the other thing is we had on 1-20-21 um, or, or a, a call uh, between the BOA and myself and we do these periodically um, just because things are moving around and we're trying to figure out um, how to fund and how to plan ahead. And so I'm, I'm just a couple of things here. We'll cover them down below in actual items, but there is a new CARES program. Um, we'll be reimbursed uh, 23,000 two times during this year. And that's consistent with what we did in the CARES One program, reimbursement of expenses, unless they've changed the rules, but I don't think so. Um, we need to make sure that uh, there's a match. We, it looks like we missed a match somewhere, but so we have to match uh, an 83.34 in this year's budget, and I don't know if it was accounted for. So um, only 2020 and 2021 were quote unquote free. Um, standard entitlements are encumbered. Uh, up to and including 2021. We'll talk about that later. Um, future entitlements of 150,000 or not. Uh, interesting, because I always have trouble doing the math here, that the way you calculate the 83.34 is we have to pay 10%. So you divide the 150 by nine. So that's where that number comes from. Um, beginning 2022 and continuing through 2026, we will receive an additional entitlement payment of 295,000. That's part of the, the uh, bipartisan infrastructure legislation. Again, we'll talk about that later. All of this requires a match. We don't have any of that in our budget for 2022. Um, so I just, uh, there, so that we need to get that in, but the, the total amounts that we'll, we will have, uh, so the 295 plus our 10%, will yield a $311,389. Uh, 
So, um, and we will have that for five years. I summarized the match because we got to get that in the budget. Those are real dollars um, and there's nothing comes back into it. So 2022, there's a $33,000 match, a 24, another 24, and there's a couple more of those. So we've got those um, coming in. You, you see this on your screen, right, by the way? Yes, I do see it. Okay, yep. good. Yes. And we'll talk about that a little bit down below. We, we've kind of put this together into uh, Joshua into a six year plan. Um, so we need to finance and we have to figure out some more maintenance. I mean, let's, our, our airport's over 15 years old and it, it needs to be rebuilt. It's like an overhaul, right? I mean, we replace the lights, we keep the cracks done, we do the surfaces, but we also need to do the surfaces for the taxiway and the runway and there'll be some other work that needs to be done. And so we, uh, I had asked Josh for a rough estimate. I know he doesn't, you know, always make sure we know that. Um, and we think the tax away is about a million and a half and the runway is another two and a half. So that's about 4 million. There's some additional work. I mean, there's a culvert underneath the runway that needs to be repaired um and just some minor thing could add another million so we're looking at five million dollars okay so boa needs to work uh to get a more reasonable cost estimate but for our planning purposes we need to be looking ahead i mean so when i you know i'm no longer here i'd like to le leave the airport commission with at least a, a long-term plan that they can execute against and we can start thinking about stuff i hate it when we're surprised like at the town of Vermont, it's like I get a thing from Black Earth uh, Fire Department. Oh, by the way, we need a new fire truck. Um, and you're, you know, we need a check for $100,000. <laughs> you know, it's like, what? We don't have it in our budget. So um, we no surprises here. We're going to think ahead, okay? Uh, we talked about the fuel farm funding. Um, and it's not an AIP project and it's not fundable, but it could be paid from the BOA state aid funding. And I don't know if Josh has any information on that. Um, we can talk about that down below again, um, but that would be an 80-20 um, where we have to pay the 20%. Um, there's been protracted discussion between Rich and I on the old SRE. Um, the, the rules have kind of changed. We can keep it. Um, the, the problem is it's really not made anymore. Um, it's costly to maintain and when it's down, it's usually down for quite a while. It's an agricultural machine where the cat is an industrial machine. Um, I originally wanted to try to sell it, and recoup the money, and then put the money into uh, equipment to help maintain uh, the banks because we're now changing our, our workload. Unfortunately, anything over $5,000 that we receive is a reduction in entitlements. So that doesn't really make it worth its while. So um, we will keep it. Um, one of the things the guys wanted was a, a snow blower. And so we have a snow blower for the New Holland so they can use the New Holland for snow blower, uh, occasional use. And then uh, Rich and I talked about, uh, and we have a list down below of kind of a, a policy, I'll call it a policy, right? Where we would use it only occasionally and you know, and as needed, that way it would minimize the possibility of having another 20,000 or $25,000 bill that really isn't accounted for. I know it's, it's, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Here's this equipment that looks really nice. You know, it's kind of like our fire trucks, right? They look really nice. They're 20 years old, but they're not reliable. <clears throat> that's the problem. That's why we have to keep getting new ones. We do the same thing in the town of Vermont. Every seven years, our, our, our snow plow trucks and everything out the door because they're just not reliable. They look good, um, but when they break, they break when you need them and they're just not around. So um, I've been working with Rich um, on that and I hope that makes sense to everybody. So that's kind of a highlight. We'll talk about more of these things down below. Uh, before I do, does anybody have any questions about any of this? Because if you do, I'm more than happy to try to fill in the blank. I have a quick question. 
John, is that so the cat is will we're just using that as a plow? Is that right? Um, yes, I think that's okay. correct. There's the way there's no snow attachments to it. Um, it only has <clears throat> a bucket, and I think it's you got a snow blade, don't you, Rich? You got a big box plow that uh, uh, which will help or helps very well moving snow straight ahead. Yeah, yeah, so that's we, we, we have those two. But yeah, and we use it a little bit for piling stuff up, of course. And yeah, you know, but yeah, essentially as a plow. I mean, it's got a big bucket in it. You'd like fill it up and carry stuff around and all the things you would do with a with an end loader. I mean, we we went 15 years with the, the other tractor, which is nowhere even close to the Caterpillar. No. And that was the sole piece of equipment. Now we do have the, the New Holland as a backup. And if there's an emergency, something broke down, or we had way too much snow, hey, it's it's all hands on deck. But if you're gonna get one or two inches of snow, it's, it's not worth it. It's really not worth the effort. So, right. Any other questions about any of this? Okay, hearing none. Um, let's move on to the next item, which would be the airport manager's report. Yep. It's interesting uh, to me how the noise complaints have dropped off uh, back to pre um, ampac levels and even lower so in december only five and we had uh, what was it 36 the previous december again no aircraft accidents or incidents on the field we're hosting safety seminars they're well attended mm -hmm. ad's there we've just got to coordinate and get the tra uh, the training on it and Come spring, I think we'll be putting the Knox boxes in because it's a little harder to put the posts in right now. Yes. Been kind of lucky on snow. Uh, only two events in December. Uh, John made a good suggestion. We should be counting, figuring out how much each uh, event, how much snow we get. I would like to note it, whether it's light snow or the heavy, and then we can look at how much it takes with each bit of equipment, the mix, how long it takes to take care of all of that. That'll be a good metric going yes. forward. Um, and the Four Lakes were really supporting this diversity, trying to get women, trying to get people of color out and flying. Uh, the Girls Fly event, January 8th. Uh, as I can look at the next, meet, uh, the next report there, it was very well attended. But anyway, we look in to December, uh, through January, only four noise complaints, two of which were from one person, same person. Um, they just really aren't getting much of anything. And now I, I double checked my numbers. We're actually up a third hour wise uh, from last year, uh, January uh, flights. So you look back, we had 24 with uh, only two, two thirds of the hours uh, last January that we did now uh, this time. So you can really, you can draw your own conclusions, but it sure seems like the uh, campaign uh, of uh, reporting has been, uh, <laughs> I don't know, doesn't have the impetus that it had at one point. Yeah. Rich, I have a quick question for you, just so I understand for our, our notes. Yeah. When you say, what is up a third? The and hours, how do you measure that? The hours flown for Mori Airplane Company. Flight, oh, okay, flight, okay. Flight so I was going to say you didn't you didn't tally the number of aircraft. It was just your own company's activity. Yeah. Flight hours. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, no ac accidents or incidents again. Uh, again, the girls' fly event was well attended. They really had a lot of fun with it. Um, uh, and let's see, Meredith Alt from the Division of Aeronautics is involved with that. We got a lot of people entering the kids entering the aviation coloring contest, which is kind of a nice thing. The kids can get a little scholarship there. Um, still waiting for training on the AED, Knox boxes in the spring. Again, only three events in January. Uh, future events, Youth and Aviation Club meeting coming in March. Great. Uh, does anybody have any questions of Rich? You know, one other thing, Rich, other than the uh, inches, we might want to just, just for 
sake of understanding, maybe try to keep the, we, we've got our meters on stuff, you know, yeah. how many hours we put on the, on the equipment. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, I, I record every hour that my people put in for their, uh, for the snow removal, at least if they write it down. So, yes, and you I'm might want to double check the hour meters on the equipment, make sure you don't yeah. cheat yourself. Yeah, I, it's a very good idea, John. I'm, Pretty sure that we're solid on that, but I will double double up on it. Absolutely, we'll, we have the mix. We can set it all out. Perfect. Great. It sounds like it's, it's, it's getting boring at the airport, and that's a wonderful thing. I love it. Okay, that's great. All right, thanks, Rich. We appreciate it. Uh, moving on to the next item, I think, Mark, you're going to handle that. That's uh, maybe uh, with the assistance of Robert the community server survey and the master plan update. So I'm going to turn that over to you. Okay, Robert, it's, it's up. I'm happy to okay. begin if, unless you'd like, well, I'll, why don't I talk about the survey? Um, so I had sent to you a, uh, it wasn't in the packet, but I had sent it previously, the results um, that we got from the, the final report from Polko. The, uh, it's on our website. If you wish to go back to it, it's on our airport master plan. And then here's the final report right here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just go through the executive summary very quickly without getting into details. Um, it, the Polko did a nice job finalizing the report and making it very readable for uh, everyone's consumption. The highlights, I'll just touch on those and then leave mm -hmm. it at that. Many residents find aircraft noise occasionally or frequently disruptive. That's one of the conclusions. Uh, they had about 1,100 um, I don't remember the exact number, but they had they had about a 33% response rate from the um, from the uh, numbers that they they had they had randomly selected um, uh, people in the city of Middleton, town of Middleton, and town of Springfield. And of the ones they selected, um, 33 there was a 33% response rate, which is which is quite high, you know, for this for a survey of a of a, of a uh, you know any sort of survey, um, one administered by government. Um, so many residents find noise occasionally or frequently disruptive. Most residents found the airport current airport use level acceptable. Um, the predicted increase in airport use levels, so that's the aviation forecast section that, that uh, is in the master plan. So the 5% increase, um, uh, the majority feel that that's acceptable. 23% said the, the predicted increase is not at all acceptable. 34% said it was totally acceptable, 24% said it was acceptable. So, um, and 19% said it was somewhat acceptable. So, you know, again, I'm, I don't wanna get bogged down in details. Um, residents were not okay with use levels increasing beyond the predicted 5%. So that was, there was uh, about half the residents said that that would be not at all acceptable. Most residents were not strongly engaged with the airport master planning process, but the closer they lived to the airport, the more they were engaged. Uh, pollution topped the list of concerns related to expanding uh, use at the airport, um, especially regarding increased risk of groundwater or air pollution. Um, that was a significant concern. Those were the significant concerns identified in the survey results. Um, for planning purposes, residents want the city to prioritize safety and environmental impacts. Uh, the environment is of high importance, but they did not have full trust in the EPA assessment process. Um, and then regarding the development alternatives uh, that were identified in the uh, uh, master planning process, um, no change, 78% would support no change to the runways, but at the same time, they were, residents were asked specific questions about each runway, east-west and north-south runway. Seven and 10, which really surprised me actually, 69% uh, supported the idea of adding 200 to 440 feet to the primary runway as long as it doesn't ex, uh, expand or go beyond the airport footprint. Uh, but I'm still very surprised by that. That's one of the, the biggest surprises in the survey results as far as I'm concerned. Even in the town of Middleton, um, that was a nearly two thirds um, supported that indicated support, either strongly support or uh, you know some level of support. Um, and regarding the north-south turf runway, converting that to a, a paved runway uh, just under half would support that. Uh, if alternative six and seven, uh, which would uh, entail rerouting Schneider Road, that's the 3,280 foot runway, 48% uh, uh, indicated they would uh, be supportive of that. And uh, if it 
it didn't involve re rerouting, it's 45%. Uh, and then regarding hangars, uh, also acceptable if they stay in the current airport footprint, three quarters said that that would be acceptable. Only 40% would support the purchase of farmland for new hangars. Any purchase of farmland would, uh, of course, require uh, uh, appraisals and compensation at fair market value. Um, and the use of, if, if the farmer's not willing, then, you know, there would be the, the potential use of eminent domain, but we haven't, you know, we're not even at the point of making that, that decision to, to proceed with a project like that. Um, so that's the survey results. You're welcome to, anybody's welcome to look at this in detail. There's a lot more data in the report. As I said, it's on our website. So and it's available to the public. Yeah. We to get some of this into our record that this uh, this document is available to the public and it's uh, in the, uh, uh, where would it be located? It's on the city's uh, airport master plan website. Okay, it's on the impact, uh, okay. On the, yeah, if you want to call it the impact page, yeah. it's, it's okay. just the airport master plan page. Ampac is just one component of that page. Okay, sure. Okay, so uh, it is available for anybody to, to read and see. And I'm sure they could, there's ways to ask questions should they choose to. Right. Okay. Thanks, Mark. So Robert, are you gonna go over the resolution? Is that the next action? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, on Tuesday night, um, the uh, <coughs> Common Council uh, voted to approve resolution 2022-08, um, which without you know just reading the whole thing, I'll just give you a kind of some highlights. Um, the very last whereas on the first page kind of describes what's um, kind of like the next steps for, for um, our engineering consultant, Mead and Hunt, um, to finalize their work on the, the master plan process. So it's in the master plan document. So it's um, development of a land use plan that will be made part of the airport layout plan preparation of noise contours depicting the future 10 year build out condition of the airport, uh, development of a financial plan um, and drafting of a new, lay, uh, new airport layout plan for submittal to the FAA for review and final approval. So that's kind of their tasks um, that we're um, you know, resolving to you know, support that. And then, um, so the resolution gave some direction for our engineering consultants. Um, and it, it basically follows the recommendations of the airport commission. Um, and these are, are just um, incorporating the following development alternatives into the airport layout plan so that they may become eligible for federal funding assistance. And that was something that was, there was a lot of discussion um, uh, on, on the Common Council um, as to you know, making sure we understood that this was not approval of any project. Um, this is just uh, putting things onto the airport layout plan through Mead and Hunt so that these uh, projects could be eligible for federal funding assistance. It's basically something that, that allows us to, to see what the future could be and of course, it was made very clear in, in that meeting on Tuesday that one option is always to do nothing, make no changes or make no changes to any one of these things and make changes to other things. But, but basically no change is always an option, but um, it was a vote seven to one uh, in favor of approving this resolution. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Now, I'd like just to make kind of a statement, again, to kind of get it into the record for more than anything else. So, um, and then I do have one question. So during the meeting, I mean, I heard some comments say that the airport commission came up with this idea, the north-south runway, and we added to the, uh, we added to it to the recommendation. And, and the fact of the matter is, we're really just part of a process. Mead and Hunt determined all the op uh, op options, including the north-south runway. AMPAC discussed them, which included people from the town of Springfield, people from the town of Middleton, um, folks that were uh, represented the environment. 
And at the end of that, they made uh, votes. They weren't, uh, they recommended, um, they ranked, I guess, individually what they thought was the best. It came to the airport commission. We took the ones with the highest votes, the top two votes, and we debated those two and we selected from it. So it was a process that looks much like a funnel. It starts with a lot going in and then Ampac bringing it down. And then, so we didn't, in, we, we really didn't add anything. All we really did was refined what came across and provided specificity so the council wouldn't have to do that on its own. And so I think that's important for the public to understand. And these comments that, you know, we're just coming up with this stuff out of thin air is, uh, it's totally bogus. So um, I think it's important to get in the record and people know that. The other thing I was gonna ask is in this process of producing the, the, the plan and everything else, before it goes to the FAA to get stamped, will the airport commission have an opportunity to review it? Uh, actually, maybe Mark has more of an idea on that than I do. I assume that meat and hunts work um, certainly will need to be approved when it is finally done. Yes. And I would, I would think that the common council would welcome the airport commission's uh, knowledge mm -hmm. um, of of you know weighing in on whatever that final report in the ALP is. So I would think so, but Mark, do you have any different thoughts? Um, well, I mean, the, the council gave direction on Tuesday uh, for the, the four bullets here. And um, I'm gonna work now with Mead and Hunt. Um, I, they, let, they actually were monitoring the call. So they were aware of the council's uh, uh, adoption of the resolution. They have, this is the original timeline that uh, was presented in 2019 to the AMPAC. Um, you can see that there's some additional steps uh, regarding uh, after alternatives analysis, the noise and land use, financial documentation and final documentation airport layout plan. They originally anticipated that being a, a you know, half a year process. They need to now um, regroup internally. They haven't been working on this for half a year, more than half a year. And so they need to shuffle this back into their work workload. You know, they obviously have other projects they're working on as well. So they will be getting back to me with a, a timeline for when they think they will be able to complete this. Um, the council didn't provide any direction as to if they wanted to see the, uh, air, if there was anything changing from this, I feel it would certainly be appropriate to bring it back to the council. Um, in terms of the, the uh, airport layout plan uh, is, is going to be prepared consistent with these recommendations. So yeah. if you as, as the commission want to uh, See, see the airport layout plan again. I mean, that's, you know, I'm empowered as staff uh, through the uh, agreement with the contract services with Mead and Hunt to uh, be, the, be the point person for the city, but obviously we've been very cognizant of the in public interest in this and working with the uh, AMPAC and then the airport commission to get buy-in instead of just having this be a staff driven process. So that's why Alder Burke sponsored the resolution was to to provide, you know, on behalf of the city, direction for what what ad, um, projects to advance for the airport layout plan. So that direction has been provided, and that is those are my marching orders. Yep. Um, well, some of these motions that we made in North South Runway that and um, the hangar development goes here or there. They were just they were uh, we approved the concept as a larger concept. But you know the devil's always in the details, and if I need to, I'd like to make a motion that the airport commission at least get to review it and make comment um, before it gets you know it goes for forward. I mean, and, and not unduly, but I think it's the how how this ultimately shakes out. We should take a look at it because you know we said well it could be six or it could be seven, um, you know it can be here it can be there, and so. I just want to be covered that, you know, we did have one final look at it and um, no one can say that we can't blame the city or anybody else because we were still part of the process right to the end. 
If, if I need to make a motion that, Mark, I'll be glad to, but. If you'd like to, yeah. I mean, if it's up to you, obviously, I, I just, I, I'm staff. So that's, if you would like yeah. to provide that guidance. Yeah, I like to make a motion that uh, after meet and hunt, uh, complete their work on the master plan, that the airport commission um, could take a, uh, a, a review of it and provide, you know, any comments just in case anything's missed. Um, and um, for consideration by Mean Hunt before it goes to the um, Common Council. Anybody second that? I guess I would just, I, I would second it. I guess um, it may not even need to go to the Common Council. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure yet. It, um, I, I think I mean, we, we can amend the wording before it goes to the FAA for approval. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. I. You know, we have, um, I mean, the, the intent of the resolution, Robert, correct me if I'm wrong, was to provide the guidance for preparation of the ALP and the rest of it is just, um, you know, we're just They're dotting I's, crossing T's. Yeah, if right. If the commission would like to see it again, that's, you know, that's your prerogative. Yeah, I think I, I, my motion is that we at least take a look at it just because there were so many variables in there, the, some of it was conceptual. I, I agree, and, and and so if if the wording could reflect um, before it goes to the FAA rather than before it goes to the Common Council, because honestly, the Common Council doesn't have the expertise sure. in this matter. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm I'm happy with that change, Robert. Okay, then oh, I would. It says, oh, I'm sorry, I, I already typed it. But go ahead if you want to make a motion again. <laughs> well, I, I was not going to make a motion again. I guess maybe oh, I'll have probably. Mark. You read back the motion you have. This is what I wrote. Motion by Halix and by Burke that the airport commission review the final draft ALP before it is submitted to the FAA. Uh, yeah, that is that is what okay. I'm seconding. Okay. okay. Right. I, I, that's fine with me. So there's a first and a second. Is there any discussion? Um, I'd like to call a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay, motion carries. And that was, it passes five to five to zero. I still don't see the mayor here. So it's uh, we have five people voting. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Okay. So um, Mark, Robert, are you complete? Does anybody have any questions? I think that is a pretty good overview of what's transpired the last few days. So yeah. Okay. Not, nothing more to add. And any uh, any of the commissioners have any questions? Robert, I think you did a nice job with the resolution. Thank you for having that ready and that it was able to be voted on by the Common Council. Appreciate that. I appreciate and your work. comments. Thank you. It's a, lot, it's a lot of hard work and we all appreciate that. So um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. And, and with that, we'll move on to the next piece, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law. I just had a piece that I grabbed that was basically applied to Wisconsin. And, and it just kind of gave us a little bit of a paragraph on the bottom it's of the, what it would be, it's page 16 as to what this was for. So if you kind of move up, it'll continue down. So it's, it's to improve our nation's airports, uh, build modern aviation, but our airports lag behind our competitors. So the, the bill is, uh, would receive 198 million for infrastructure projects for airports over seven years. The 295 we've got is for five years. I, I'm not sure, honestly, that every, anybody really knows um, things may change and it may be less, it may be more. Um, so we'll see how this unfolds, but we have a number to start with. Um, it will be air side and land side need, improving runways, taxiways and airport owned towers. We have no towers. Um, there's actually, I think a call out chunk of money for that. Terminal development projects, noise reduction projects. And then in addition, there's a five year discretionary fund um, that I'm sure the BOA will hand out over airport terminal development project. I address the aging infrastructure for our airports, including accessibility, which is always needed, and energy efficiency, airport safety. So that's really what the bipartisan infrastructure law is intended to cover. 
And so some of our projects would come under that. And so we will continue to work with um, Josh and Mark and, and the others to uh, make sure we understand that changing landscape, if you will, and uh, incorporate it into our business plans. Uh, so that's, I just, it is what it is, I just read it. Um, so from that, and from the other pieces that I talked about earlier, Josh put together um, a six year improvement plan. So we could just kind of see where we're at and what the local dollars would be. We included into this, um, which will be a later vote, the fuel farm being taken over by the Bureau of Aeronautics and uh, a 20% match um, for that. And so um, that's included in here. So we've already took care of the taxiway cracks and everything. The airfield lighting is in place. Um, mowing equipment, I think will be higher. And we will talk about that a little bit, I guess we get to the budget. My discussions with Rich is there are two things that we need to do. And I, I, I consider them to be distinct and separate. One of them is we have a little bit of clearing left to do. And so we need to get some equipment to clear. And I think, and from my conversations with, you know, just anecdotal, for four or $5,000, we can rent a piece of equipment that will clear the rest of the trees and everything. Uh, there'll be, we don't need the goats or whatever, and it'll go, uh, go through the entire um, land that we have within our confines. And then after that, it's gonna be a kind of a different problem, in my perspective. We're gonna to have to be dealing with all the saplings and all the things that come up and things along the, the bank. Um, as we've talked about previously, the city and the stormwater projects are gonna actually take over the dredging and all the other pieces. And some of the culverts will come under um, the uh, renovation of the, uh, the taxiways. So some of that will change, which may cause us to have to find some more money down the, down the road. Um, it's, it's the way the world works. So it's, it's, a, it's a changing landscape. So we have wildlife in there that may or may not be moved. We have some environmental impacts um, for the taxiways, for some work that we're doing. Um, there's design and bid of taxiway A reconstruction, uh, taxiway A uh, reconstruction, and then design for runway 1028. So you can see we're not really gonna get down to 1028 until 2026. So all these things take quite a bit of time and it'll be a few years after that before we get even that uh, remediated and uh, up, to, up to speed. So this number is gonna go on further and we're gonna be out of, we're gonna be going through our entitlements at 400 or 311 plus 150. We'll go through that pretty quick because um, we're looking at $5 million. So I will continue to work with all the funding sources, uh, we'll try to figure that out. Um, but we will sometime yet in 2022, talk about what our mowing needs are after we have a better handle on equipment and would they try some equipment and, um, and we can make a judgment on that, see if we can get a fund. So this is the six year straw plan as it sits today. Um, Josh is on the line, so if you have any questions about that. I, I have a question uh, regarding the bipartisan <clears throat> money, and, yep. and if someone could clarify if it requires the same uh, state and local match. It does. That's that, that's that sheet that I showed that why we need to come up with an extra 30000 and 24000 a year out of our cash budget because we have to match those gifts, if you will, uh, on an annual, uh, on a, as, as gifted basis. Okay, it's in that, it's in the, uh, it's, uh, Kevin, it's in the letter, I, uh, uh, meeting notes with the Bureau of Aeronautics uh, that I had up front, where if you take a look, uh, thanks, Mark. So we're, so you can see right there, summary, 
And then here's where it talks about the match. We have to match 33,057 and 22, and then so forth and so on. So th that's real cash out of pocket, transferred out of our account to the Bureau of Aeronautics. I, I was just hoping, I was just hoping some of these, uh, you know, these sources of uh, capital wouldn't require so much. So I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, I think that, you know, I mean, I'll let Josh speak to it, but there are some discretionary funds available. I'm sure that it's not all allocated to be handed out to the airport. The Bureau of Aeronautics retains some um, that they can make judgments on. I'm sure the FAA didn't hand it all out in block grants. They probably have a pool. Everybody has a pocket and they return some, uh, they retain some for contingencies. And so it's kind of like, you know, you never know until the moment comes that you have to ask for something, you know, kind of what's available. And I know Josh does a great job of it um, because it, it literally is like nailing jello to a telephone pole. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty tough. Josh, you have any comments since you're on the line? Yeah, I think the only thing to keep aware of, and I think the the bill money or IAJ or whatever you want to call it is five years. And I think what's going to happen is whatever you don't, there's going to be airports that can't spend all that. And then it's going to go to a di big discretionary pot. And then everyone's going to get to fight for it in the sixth year. So you guys won't have a problem spending yours, but other people having a problem could be beneficial to you if you're ready for the next project. Got it. That's, that's a good point. Thanks, Josh. Hmm? Any questions from any of the commissioners? Yeah, so um, kind of my question is uh, looking forward, you know, at that six year plan mm -hmm. and reflecting back on, shall we say, the amount of time it took to get to where we are now with a, uh, a an airport master plan and the delays um, involved in that process. Um, am I just being naive or is it fair to anticipate that anything that we want to do at the airport moving forward, even if it's doing just maintenance, leaving the runways the exact length they are and everything as it is, as this information is made public and as the discussion starts and it starts, pieces start getting moved before the Common Council, I would say we're going to be struck with delays upon delays because there is going to be, um, I think, a lot of pressure on the city and Common Council um, every step of the way. If, if, if we want to repair a, a taxiway and, and because of that, we have to get underneath the taxiway and do work with a culvert and there's going to be an environmental study. This should all be just boilerplate type of work that just gets done and probably no surprises. But my guess is that it, there, there's going to be um, hurdles we're going to have to jump along the way when, uh, to, to get to that point. So is there anything we can do to keep these timelines tight? Well, so let me say something that I'll, uh, Josh can always correct me if I get it wrong. If, if we are repairing what we have today without changing the uh, shape and configuration of the runway, the taxiway, um, the, uh, the pipes underneath the, uh, the, the, the uh, runway, if we're repairing infrastructure that we have, that's one thing. And I think that's, we've already petitioned for most of that. And that's, 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 that we can just continue on with. There, there should be no drama. If you wanna add 200 feet to the runway, at the time that you, um, but at any time, then that's going to be different, right? Because now you're you're changing uh, the configuration of the airport. I think that will trigger 
uh, and again, Josh can, you know, uh, environmental studies, um, it will trigger uh, maybe land use compatibility. It will trigger a whole lot of things that have to be done um, before it could be approved, which I think in a way is good for the common council or future common council, because they will have, they will know what the the environmental impact is they will know all of these things so unlike the, the passing of the resolution it will be a fact-based process um and that all could see so that my that's my thoughts josh am i am and i, I would just add one i would add one thing before josh talks and my understanding of this is there are different levels of environmental review environmental assessment, environmental impact statements, that sort of thing. And Josh, if you could, when you respond to John, if you could touch on that too, please. I, it, I mean, you, it might be hard to say what project requires what type of environmental review, but the point is somebody makes that determination how significant a project is. So I'll turn it over to Josh. Yeah, so I think John hit it pretty pretty good. If, you, if you're coming in to reconstruct your taxiway and runway as is, and you're replacing the culverts as is, the apron, whatever, that is the simplest of the categorical do documents. I mean, we do it in-house, then we send it off to the FAA. Um, it's when you start getting outside of your footprint, you start digging up new land, so like a runway extension, or you did say that northeast hangar, that's where your delays are going to come in, because you are going to go through an environmental impact study and that could take 12 months to a year 12 12 to 18 months um so yeah the delays if you if you're fixing what you got probably not that big if you're expanding what you have they're going to be a year year and a half that's why if you see that chart that i sent to john um that he had that that straw CIP, I, I show the environmental starting a year before we even design it. So I tried to take into account some of those delays as best I could. Now you guys are a little bit different because your delays are probably gonna be, well, they'll be bigger. Um, but I just kind of put these together as a quote unquote typical airport. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's that's excellent to know because then this way, um, we could, you know, in a, in those types of hypothetical discussions, say, well, okay, um, we want to look at a north south uh, expansion. Um, you know, in the um, in that one hundred and ninety eight million uh, that's being put out there. There is mention of noise reduction. Well, you know, changing the way we use the airport could reduce noise to the west, um, which could be a lead opportunity to a north-south runway project, which then really translates into reality that we would probably need two to three years to just start getting something like that through where maybe a typical environmental assessment is one year I think based on our experience and how things have now gone in this area, it would probably take us two to three years. And you I know. don't disagree with that because mm -hmm. you know how the opposition to the airport was really hammering on the environment. A master plan gives you a high level view, but when you go to add or say you were doing the north south, that's when they're really, we really have to dive deep into the environmental concerns. So, they're going to get there what they wanted. It's just not at the time they wanted it. Well, it's impossible. If you want an environmental impact, the environmental impact is based on what you're going to do. And we didn't know what we were potentially going to do until we had a modified ALP. So as if we did this to 3,200, tell us what the environmental impact is. So, you know, they were asking for the, the cart in front of the horse. Now that we know potentially what could happen based on that hypothesis, then we could decide here's what, what the impact will be. You're right, they didn't get it at the time they wanted because it's, the, the process has an order and we have to follow the order. And I, I, would, I would imagine whether you would expand a runway by 200 feet or 400 feet 
it's going to take the same amount of time to do an environmental impact study. I would agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good to know. So then, these are the types of things if those opportunities present themselves, uh, you know, within um, our airport layout plan moving forward, then it gives us some timeline to think about. Yeah, I don't appreciate I mean, that. Thank you. There's a lot of there's a lot of steps. And I don't make the, I hate to disappoint the opponents, but there will be no tractors showing up next week. Um, <laughs> nothing's been decided on. We just have a planning document. That's it. It's it's nothing. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. But thank you, Josh. I appreciate it, and thank you for commissioners for the questions. John, I have a quick question. So just to clarify yeah. the question I was asking about environmental impact. So who you you said that you can do in-house review for uh, existing infrastructure, you know, repairing existing infrastructure basically is a categorical, categorical review in-house. So anything that expands, uh, any potential project that expands the airport footprint requires some level of environmental review. And is that determination then made at the FAA, what level of environmental review is associated with each project? Yeah, so basically we start out with always the lowest, the, cat, the categorical exclusion, and that'll be for any rehab, which we, we do in-house. Um, and then if you start expanding, I think what they do is they start with a, I think it's a environmental assessment. And then they, they get it. For that. Yeah, it might, I can't remember which one is number two and which one's the big one. Let's say it's the EIS, the environmental impact statement is number two. So the, the FAA will start to work through that. And if they determine, hey, there's some bigger issues we really need to study, they'll kick it up to the third level, which would be an environmental assessment. I, I Actually, I think you have it backwards with all due respect from what, when I That's read fine. about this. So I think the EIS is the, is the large full-blown, you know, that, that gets coordinated by the central, you know, the FAA office in, D, in DC even. I, and, and the original airport reconstruction didn't require an EIS that required an environmental assessment. So, if assuming that the um, assuming that the the same um, policy or, or or regulations are in place for what what triggers an EIS, I highly doubt that the work that was done, any of the projects that are identified now, certainly the East West Runway would not require an EIS based on past practice. At most, it would require an environmental assessment. But I think there's a statement. There's a level below that too. The point I was trying to make is you you don't determine that. It is the FAA that determines what level of environmental review is necessary, depending on the project that's proposed. Correct. If I sent them a CADEX and they read it, they'd be, um, right. you know, say for your runway extension, they'd be like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I, I just want to understand for myself and for everybody, I think that it's not something that's done by the BOA. It's, it's a region. It's an, it's an FAA determination. Correct. And then probably what I then think is very important to point out to <clears throat> um, anybody living in the area to the west of the airport to make crystal clear, if the airport is going, will be making um, in place, uh, call it repairs improvements to the existing runway and taxiway, any assessment that's made is simply done in compliance with the BOA or FAA. And we're under no pressure and obligation to go above and beyond that um, in any way whatsoever to move ahead with an in-place project. That would be correct. Yeah, that, we, that's correct. No one can make me do an EIS when it's a simple CAD X. Okay. But I, and, and, and I think that needs to be made crystal clear that the airport can make its repairs and improvements, even if it means repairing the whole runway from end to end, all 4,000 feet, every single taxiway and all the infrastructure that's underneath it. We can do it as needed. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thanks, David. Anybody Thank else have anything else? This is Robert. Just just to reiterate, I mean, it's it's always good, and I appreciate the the questions and comments that have come up here. But um, there's always policy decisions involved with all of this stuff too. And you know, right now, just to reiterate, there is no direction 
um, to to do any changes, uh, you know, above and beyond what already exists. So, um, you know, this how it affects the timeline. I don't. I can't predict the future either. It's it, it probably will affect the timeline if if some you know if there's some projects listed here as as possibilities. You know, don't, don't expect any timeline to just follow, you know, what's estimated out, you know, five years in advance, because I, I think, you know, uh, it, there's not even a decision that any of these things will move into a project phase anyway. So it's good questions, good to think about what the future could bring. But at the end of the day, I can't predict the future. And I don't think anyone else can either. So yeah, this is, this is just to re this six year timeline here is just mostly to rehab what we have. There's, right. There's no new construction. And, and I might add to your comment, Robert, that the airport is not empowered to, to do any of these things without the direction of the city of Middleton. Right. I mean, we, we may we're, we're maintaining what we have and we're trying to stay ahead of the process but we operate under the direction of the city of Middleton. Right. And that, that was the key point I was going to add to this too. Yeah. You have a, what you have on your screen here is what we currently have as the direct, you know, these are the projects that we are working on with the BOA based on the petitions that we have recorded in the, in the last couple of years, most recently, the, the one we just updated, but mm -hmm. the city could at any time go through the petition process to add to the east-west runway or to the north-south or to you know buy land for hangar space etc that is entirely a policy decision that john as you were just emphasizing i just want to reiterate that as well that yeah. you know there's no reason why we could, this timeline that show or the uh, uh, projects listed here can't change but a decision has to be made to do that that's a policy decision of the city this is just purely maintenance of right, what we right. Have. okay and that involves a hearing, I would add. You know, the petition process, which we're all familiar with, involves a officially noticed public hearing. We've gone through it several times over the years with updating our petition. And uh, we just went through it uh, a month or two ago, whenever that was. Yeah. So I think, that, I think it's pretty clear. So thank, thank you for all of the clarification. Okay, great. If we have no questions, I'd like to move on to the next one, the airport 2021 year end report. I, I will I, I will know that Mr. Deep has joined us and has his hand up. Okay. I go yeah, ahead. I, I do have a question and that is that uh, why would you want to do the um, the taxiway before you do the runway? Is there a reason for it? Yeah. Um, the Bureau of yeah. Aeronautics um, does a, a rating of the condition. And then based on their rating of the condition that makes a determination as to when the maintenance needs to be uh, done. And at the current state, the, con the condition and the rating of the taxiway uh, dictates that it be done before the runway. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. All right, so we'll move on uh, to the next to the enterprise run. So this is just, um, we can look at our hits and our misses and, and see, uh, you know, uh, what, what's interesting might have happened here. Um, so, I mean, most of our income sources are pretty straightforward and, and they're very limited. So we have uh, 108,000, we've got that. Um, we have the hangar land leases, the MADC, the fuel flowage varies somewhat. Um, the FB, the uh, crop rental, is always about what it's supposed to be, solar farm rent, we know all of that. And that, that doesn't really change. Um, we do have um, some occasional repayments of entitlements and I assume our books are probably pretty straight with the BOA by now. And then there are some additional grants that we get um, such as the CARES. In our budget going forward, since we didn't know until now about CARES and we didn't know about the other uh, bipartisan infrastructure legislation, we will make an adjustment on the income portion of the, um, of, of the 2022. We'll, we'll need to go back and re 
rebuild the forecast just so that we have an idea of what's going to really come up. And, and I think these budgets should be a, a living document anyhow. If you know you blew it, um, you got to go fix it and be prepared for it. And it will also help us do the next one. When I go down to the expenses, um, I think everything is pretty much as anticipated. Um, the insurance is a little higher. Um, we had in the air grounds maintenance, that $25,000 actually has about, I think, hey, Rich, you can correct me if I'm wrong, about $14,000 for the goats. Uh, 10,000. Yeah, yeah there's a, plus there's more. another build. Beg your pardon? I thought it was in the neighborhood of 10,000 and some change, John. That's but what I, I thought too. <laughs> no, the, you, we have the listing. I, I oh, provided okay. everybody the detailed listing. And if you look in it, you'll see there's two entries for um, whatever is the name of that company, environmental, what is it? Uh, I'll let you all look at it, but you can look, you can see the well, categories and we can see exactly where the funds are. I asked for details uh, for now, all of it. I have an explanation for that one. Uh, last year's bill didn't get paid last year. Uh, so it, it probably got rolled over into this year. Well, we save money. I mean, it's all of this is on the time the bill got paid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because for some reason that it didn't get paid last year, even though it was submitted. So, vegetation solutions. Yeah. LLC. There's, there's and the a bill. Ten, it ten was um, April. Yeah. The first one was in April for seventeen hundred, yeah. and then this one was for ten thousand two hundred ninety. Yeah, and that April was for the previous year. So, yeah. We we just got the we got the invoice from them too late to uh, apply it to twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty. Well, we operated we operate on a cash in cash out basis. So last year we got a deal. Um, I think the same thing is true of the um, the airport manager's contract because this is an estimated amount, but I think there's an extra. Rich, you can uh, correct me. Six thousand dollars that we'll have to take out of this year's budget, the 22 budget, oh, that's that a part of 2021 work. I mean, that's just the way it works. Yeah, yeah. Right? That so is there's some adjustments, mm -hmm. right? And the airport grounds maintenance will adjust that and will adjust the airport managers. That, that needs to be adjusted. Um, outside services, um, that's... Um, uh, pretty much as we anticipated, we're very close to that. Entitlements, we'll need to throw that back in because we didn't pay those, and that's probably the one that we're missing. Um, the one that, that gets me is on other operating expenses, and that's the $28,500 that we got billed for Polco, and that was not part of our budget. Um, the city looked at our budget. They didn't add anything to our budget. And that's really part of the airport master plan, which I thought was to be handled by the city. So uh, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, city of Middleton uh, make a journal entry and return the $28,500 back into the airport budget. That's not going to happen, John. That's uh, why not. Either, it, it would have to come either from that two hundred fifty thousand dollar, or BOA has to pay. This was uh, it is part of the master plan. It wasn't the city was going to spend any more money than it is. City is committed to spending fifty thousand dollars, and that's it. Gurdeep, how is the airport commission going to build and maintain a budget and administer it? If the city is throwing money into the airport budget, that's not accounted for. How can we how can we run our business? I, I thought some, somebody got that approval, or at least somebody. It I don't not, know, Mark. It was it wasn't in line. It wasn't in our budget, and our budget was approved by the finance council. Well, they should oh. have included that somewhere. So I well, guess they, that somebody missed it. So it's. Uh, Okay, well, it's, it's a good idea to send it back and let there be a discussion. And uh, That's, I just so. yeah, I made the motion that we request it, um, that it be journalized back into the account. It's not part of our budget. 
Um, it's not part of the approved budget and it just kind of come out of nowhere. I think we need to have a policy that where you, you, these things need to be approved and planned for as best we can. Otherwise we can't build and administer a budget. So I made the motion. I don't know if anybody's willing to, to second it. Oh, yeah, I'll second it, absolutely. So we have a first and a second. It's a, it's, a, it's a motion to request a journalization of the, the funds to be returned uh, to, the, to the airport fund. Now, the, the council may say no, but at least we can, we can request it and, and plead our case that it's not in the approved budget and we have to maintain our budgets. And why why is it an airport expense? This is this has nothing to do with the operation of the airport. This um, in any way whatsoever. So, Excellent. Go ahead. I mean, I sort of knew this was coming. I you yep. know when I when the city I, I saw this coming. I just was I was just wondering who was going to try to sneak it under the radar seriously. Um, when when this whole when 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 the idea of of an of 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 contracting for a for a, to have to have the poll done. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have a first and we have a second. Would anybody like to further discuss? Yeah, I like Mark to weigh in that. What really happened here, Mark? What happened is that the Common Council last uh, uh, last year, well, actually in 2019, committed to do an in a community multi community survey. Mm -hmm. And then last year, when you got a proposal from Polko, which the city administrator obtained, uh, you authorized <clears throat> proceeding with that proposal, $28,500. And then there was no, uh, I, I don't, I wasn't um, involved in that recommendation that was, you know, obtained by the finance <coughs> by the city administrator. And then it had to be paid for somehow. And I don't know if that was specifically a finance committee decision or the city administrator, I'm not sure, but, but. Uh, it got charged to the airport fund. They are, yeah. John is correct that it was not budgeted for. Yeah, well, uh, my understanding is uh, this was handed to the city administrator and he provides the journalization of accounts and he said, take it out of this account. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that there was a, a decision or even, I don't know if there was a discussion about how it would be paid for. I, I don't recall right now off the top of my head. Oh, yeah, my, I, I, I know at the city council level, it was the discussion and it was supposed to come from the airport budget, but I don't know whether M Mike asked you to get approval from the airport commission, but yeah, it was in the discussion and I'm sure it's part of the minutes there. So mm -hmm. that it wasn't a city expense, it was com coming out of the enterprise fund. I'm looking up the minutes to see if there's any indication from that meeting. I think that was probably in October. Um, I don't recall, was that, that was probably early October, right? Probably if, if, if the bill showed up in November, according to this chart, it, yeah, it, it's probably yeah. October. But uh, yeah, I think, I think we can go back and ask what happened and see what our options are. I'll be able to get you an answer if it's in the council minutes here fairly quickly. It's just uh, it just loaded up here. Sure. Um, all right, we have, let's see here. We'll try the uh, October 5th. Uh, that was probably a miscellaneous. What do you find at the missing? In the finance committee, or well, anyway, I'm looking in the council because that's okay, also okay. Where yeah, the that's fine. Made. That's fine. It was probably these are under ordinances, it wasn't a resolution, so it's not under mm -hmm. uh, that that date. Let's look at the October 19th um, agreements, miscellaneous. I don't see it under there, and I don't know what other category. Well, it could be under recommendations too. I guess I should have looked at that one before. Let me look at that quickly for October. Um, I've never understood what recommendations is. It's always a general category. Okay, I don't see it there. So let's go to November. Um, Airport master plan survey draft. Okay, so let's look at the minutes. Actually, I'm sorry. Let's, let's look at those comments and see if it says, 
um, survey will conduct a separate survey. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about how it would be funded in the staff comments. And the minutes indicate. It will be just if somebody made a motion and another one voted. Second, and that would be it. it so. Changes to question nine. Yeah, so there was no, I, I'm not aware of any specific discussion by policymakers about how that was going to be. I, I, it may have happened. It just isn't documented in the minutes. Is it right? possible it would be, in, you have finance committee meeting for that day too? Um, I can look. Uh, common council plan. There we go. I don't know if it was, well, we'll see. Um, that was probably just considered a council. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything from that. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to abstain from this one. Okay. Well, um, so just so where the motion is to request that the POCO money be journalized back into the airport fund. And the reason is it's never been in the budget. It was never approved by the finance committee in the original budget. And there was never any notification that this potentially would be a cost to the airport. And I have a second on that from David. We've had a discussion. Is there any more discussion before I call a vote? Well, I just want to understand the motion. I mean, I understand the motion, but I want to make sure that you're comfortable with what I'm writing. To request that the city restore 28500 to the Airport Enterprise Fund, given that this was not in the Airport Commission's 2021 approved budget. Um, I'll ex explain it for the survey. Yeah, um, so that, and, but also it, it wasn't, and, and also the, our budget was approved by the Finance Committee. And it was not in the approved uh, budget either. And it has nothing to do with the operation of the airport. And it doesn't have anything to do with the operation of the airport. And clearly there was no discussion on how the poll was to be funded. I, I don't I don't think that's a I don't think we can make okay. that statement. I don't know if there was discussion okay. or not. It just isn't documented. Yeah. Well, I think this is enough. Somebody can do the research. Um, we've made our case. <laughs> and you know, hopefully in the future, you know, we'll we'll plan better so that we can build a solid budget and do a better job of administering it. These things happen. Um, the best thing you can do is correct them, right? So- I'm, I'm I mean, is this, a, is this right. a typical behavior within a city? So if uh, all of a sudden somebody says, we need to do something uh, over at one of the parks and someone just says, yeah, sure. Let's, um, let's do a survey and find out if people want a new swing set and let's charge the parks for that survey. I mean, ideally, ideally, the funding source would have been identified at the council meeting. Um, maybe it was, but it wasn't documented. I, I'm not sure. I, I can't speak to it. I wasn't ready to answer this question, so I, I don't know what happened. But my guess is that, well, I'm just guessing that the city administrator decided there's no other source of funds identified, so let's charge it to the airport fund. I'm guessing that's what happened. Okay. So um, I have a first and a second. Is there any additional discussion? If not, I'd like to call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I'm abstaining it, so not opposed. I understand, and, and uh, the mayor's is abstaining. Okay. So it was, it was carried four to four to zero with the mayor abstaining. Yeah. Uh, probably four, five, five, to five, five to zero. Five to zero with oh, the mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, we have an extra member now, yep. Okay, great, all right, thank you. Um, I move on to the next item then, and that is uh, mid, uh, migration from lead to unleaded fuel. Um, David had provided some additional information on the kind of the status of fuels, and I thought that might be um, useful. So David, you wanna just give a real quick update on, I mean, cause there are a lot of things said at the airport or at the council meeting about old planes can't use this fuel and nobody wants to use it and so forth and so on. So David, you've got the floor. Sure. Um, yeah, the two documents that you got, the one is an engineering, call it white paper and report. And it, it really, it's an exhaustive history of, of the work done on finding um, 
uh, alternative uh, uh, enhancers for higher octane to uh, to tetraethyl lead. So it 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 just what it really the takeaway with that engineering study is that this has been going on for a really long time, and and it's been going on at a global level. The study uh, came out of uh, uh, Europe and highlights um, petrochemical companies and uh, aviation interests globally looking for solutions. So that's that's the gist of that. The other thing is of, of real interest is the uh, FAA uh, fact sheet uh, regarding uh, um, very recent from uh, Reed Hill on, on U94. And so one of the comments that was made uh, more than more more than once um, at at, the, at um, last night's meeting, um, you know, people said exactly what 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 John just said is is that pilots do not. People said pilots don't want to use unleaded fuel, um, and also said that many older aircraft don't use unleaded fuel, and all of that information is just simply wrong. It's just not true. And if you look at this study at Reed Hill and also supporting docu documentation that came from that white paper, um, pilots want to use unleaded fuel because it actually is easier on the engines. Yeah, take a look at that cost. picture. Yeah, roll up to the yeah. picture of the cylinder valves. Yeah. Um, it, what, what page do you have to? Right oh, there. There you go. I and, mean, go ahead. Yeah, and, and so... Uh, Mark Milner, who's who's a respected um, uh, aviation industry um, probably writer and analyst, you know, he he said that of the worldwide fleet of 400,000 aircraft, you know, need the higher octane fuels. Um, and interestingly, he noted that 70% of the general aviation aircraft registered in the United States can operate on a UL 94 fuel. But this is what's interesting, and this is where so much misinformation is really being spread around. It's not older airplanes that are restricted. It's not antique airplanes. It's not that pilots don't want to use unleaded fuel. What he stated is that 30% of the fleet that can't operate on the UL-94 consume 70% of the fuel. And that is because those airplanes are highly utilized and really powerful airplanes whose engines take advantage of the higher octane. And that's and so if you look at this report, that's not an accurate representation of first what's going on at Maury and also at Reed Hill. So um, it, it really goes to show that the aviation community wants an unleaded fuel, prefers an unleaded fuel, and is eager to find these options and solutions. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the pictures, you can see what the effect of the on the engine is. I mean, we would much rather have an engine with that, without all the gunk in it and the maintenance associated with it. There's been there's been suggestions that an engine on the unleaded fuel can actually run twice as long before um, a mandatory overhaul. And that's that's big value to people that are flying. And it's, I mean, this is a win for everybody. We just have to get the politics out of the way to get these things approved. They're here. I mean, Once we get 94 UL on the field, uh, I believe uh, of my nine uh, aircraft, uh, six of them I'm sure can use the 94 and the other three possibly, the only thing I know that can't is our charter aircraft. So I'll be using 94 UL in everything that I can. Yes, it and I will be too. Yeah. yeah, we all will. So yeah, uh, and and the other interesting thing is, um, uh, the the Continental Engine, uh, the TSIO, uh, used in the uh, Cirrus, is um, has been tested, and the uh, folks at GAMI. Um, are running that fuel in that engine. What's holding them up in getting it into a Cirrus, for example, is the airframe portion of, uh, and Rich, you, you could, I, I don't quite understand that. So I guess, <laughs> so the engine can be approved, but then the airframe isn't. 
<laughs> well, it's the it's, it's the sealants and the tanks, it's the hoses, it's the clamps, it's everything that the fuel touches. Right. So, and it's not that it's not approved. They're just still waiting on working through those processes. Yeah, but that the hundred UL are is a, a plug and play. It, there's no problem with it, according to you know for. If you can use a hundred or low lead, you can use a hundred UL. So that's really the solution for a lot of aircraft, the turbocharged ones especially. Yeah. So the fuel's coming. A lot of planes can use it. Pilots want to use it. Um, we just have to get it on the field and make it available. It will be a win-win for pilots. It will be a, a win for residents. It'll be a win for everybody. So. We need to continue on the path uh, that we started uh, to get it completed. So David, do you have any more qu uh, comments you wanna make? Oh, we thank good? you very much. Okay, great. Does anybody have any questions to ask David? Yeah, I, I do. So to begin with, I want to say, David, thank you. I went through these both articles and uh, they were they are very interesting and useful. My question is, uh, let's first, uh, go through that larger article, not the one from uh, which gives the history of it from Malaysia, but this is uh, uh, not this one, the other one. So, uh, so I looked at it, they did the comparison that if you were to use UL 94, you save $500, so I don't know over what period. So UL 94 has been available for quite for some time what is the cost differential? How much is uh, LL100 versus UL94 per gallon? Is there a big difference? I imagine there is. There, um, uh, I, Mayor, there's I'm a sorry, slight difference. Yeah. <clears throat> when I priced it out, the UL94 is a little bit more expensive and I'd committed to uh, keeping it on a par with the 100 octane to get it used. I think so, it's, a, it's a volume problem too, right? It's like you, you have to have enough volume to fill up the entire tanker or you're taking a partial tank and you're paying full price of the, of the carriage, if you will, right, to, to get it to you. So it's, 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 it's an economic problem where you're, you're talking about the base cost of the product, but also getting it to the site for, dis, for delivery. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, which is why I wanted to go with the bigger tank so we could always go with the full load. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is the solution here? I mean, so there are, uh, you know, there are planes which can take UL94 now, but uh, since the usage won't be quite as high, so you don't want to want to make a commitment to that one. You will have too many different kind of fuels. Well, we so, need a tank, right? We, yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things is we can't buy it if we have no, nothing to put it in. Um, so we need, I'll let people closer to the airport operations than me discuss it, but I mean, that's kind of the whole reason why we wanted to have a new tank dedicated to unleaded fuel, because we can't put it, we can't put the 94 UL aviation fuel in with the jet fuel, and we can't mix it with the 100 low lead fuel. So we need a third tank that's dedicated for unleaded fuel is, is my understanding. But again, yeah. I'll let others speak. Yeah, airports have historically been a two fuel product um, available. They would have an av gas, 100 low lead, and they would have a jet A. And then there would be, you could self-service or you could pay to have somebody put it in your tank. People have not had three products. I've talked to the engineers and they said they've told people for years they might want to consider three products, but it's never been the standard, right? So what we're doing is kind of different. This is the problem at Reed Hillview. Reed Hillview says, okay, we're going to quit selling 100 UL. We're going to empty the tank and we're going to use the 94 UL in it. Now that created a whole lot of problems like what about the airports on the field? What about people putting the wrong fuel in the airplane? I mean, there's all kinds of problems associated with it. Mm -hmm. With the solution that we're looking at, which is a progressive solution, 
we have both available. And as new planes get certified for the UL-94, they can transition over. And it's, you know, right now, 60 or 60% 60 of all the fuel usage will be transferred. We did a survey of every airplane that could use the UL-94 and talk to the pilots. And they said they would use the fuel um, at an equivalent price, which Rich is guaranteed to do. So John, so UL-94 has been around for a while. So now there's one of the new fuel coming up, which just got approval last year or last year. And we are actually going more after that. I'm sure there's a, probably some reason for doing that because that's useful for more planes than this one is that now this is called Swift and Swift uh, has been there for some time. And then there's a, some new one just yes. getting in the process of approval, but we are more uh, excited about that new one rather than the Swift. So there must be some reason for it. Yeah, so let's, let me just kind of expound on a little bit of what David said. So the, there is a set of, of uh, aircraft that uh, are, have been approved for the 94 UL. That's, that's, that's historic, it's, it's, it's part of history. High performance engines um, that use turbochargers and high compression as a rule cannot use the 94 UL they were only approved for the 100 low lead. There is a new fuel, GAMI 100 uh, unleaded, that can be used and been tested as David has said um, on the, on the, 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 the uh, Cirrus, which is you know, a very high compression, high performance engine. And that works just great. The problem is the FAA has not approved it. Now, when they, so the strategy is this, we add the third tank, we fill it up with 94 UL. We move everything over that we can, the pilots are on board. When the 100, um, GAMI 100 is available, it's, it's fungible with the 100 low lead, which means we could then, as the tank goes down, we can fill it up with the GAMI 100 UL and then transition over to two uh, unleaded fuels, one 94 UL and one uh, 100 uh, GAMI 100. This is just like the pumps you go to. When you pull into the, you can buy what? You can get the 91 octane, you can get the, the 88, you get the whatever your engine needs. You don't have to get pay for more than what you need. And um, this is just how cars transitioned over to unleaded fuel. And this is the process that I believe that aircraft will. Yeah, so can I add something? I, I was gonna say, can I add something with the GAMI fuel? Uh, yeah. Dirty, the, um, the, for whatever reason, GAMI on this 100 low lead, on the DOE, Design of Experiment, uh, agreement with the FAA was that they would consider the both the engine and airframe con configuration. Why they did this, I don't know. High wing, low wing, fuel pumps, fuel systems, but that's what they agreed to do. So now they have this DOE that requires uh, airframe engine matrix and all those combinations. And then they get this huge approval and they don't have to STC the fuel, which is a standard type certificate from airplane to airplane. They just have approval. But that's the uh, study matrix that they agreed to with the FAA. So that may be slowing things up a little bit, even though it's perfect, it's been shown perfectly fine in all of the engines that use 100 low lead so far. They still have to complete the DOE, if that makes and sense. How, how long would that take? And I thought they had some approvals. I don't know what. I mean, it generates a lot of excitement. So how long would that be before it uh, has all the approvals and available? Right, they have quite a few approvals. If, uh, the matrices are, are complete. They, the last time I talked to the president of the company, he seemed to think a year to a year and a half. Okay. And then the, all these studies will be complete, but there's still a commercial delivery issues with that. But, the, but to answer your question, a year to a year and a half. So we are looking at about two years before it becomes available then. Probably. Before we, 
for for ev for everybody probably available on site for everybody yet yeah, up to two years would be fair. i think the takeaway here um is that if we can get the third tank which is you know we're putting money into the design of it we're 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 we have an estimate of around three hundred thousand dollars give or take for actually building and hopefully installing this third tank. Once we have that third tank here, we can begin using unleaded fuel almost instantly if we start, if we go to the Swift 94 UL or UL 94. So mm -hmm. the, the, the real thing here, Gurdeep, is whatever we can do uh, ourselves, whatever we can do in conjunction with the, the BOA um, to get this, third tank in place, that's really the thing that we need. And once we have that third tank in place, we can start selling, you know, to probably 50 to 60% of the planes, we can start selling them unleaded fuel almost immediately once we have this third tank. So that's really the takeaway is let's get the tank in place. We're doing work on the engineering side of it. Um, and we have to follow through and get the actual tank built and installed. And once we do that, we will be ahead of the game, um, you know, statewide to have, you know, this third tank that allows us to do, um, you know, this, the, the unleaded fuel and it, it'll, it'll handle at least 90 or 60% or of the planes out there, it looks like, or 50 to 60. And then eventually, um, when the the 100 uh, gam uh, the GAMI 100 unleaded fuel comes online, we can slowly start ramping that up to eventually 100% of the planes. But for for right now, the bottleneck is getting this tank in place. I mean, we're doing that. I, I think let's go with that one, and uh, I think that's moving forward in any case. So yeah. there's at least some progress. I hope so. Great. All right. So we're, we'll talk about the moving forward. So we're, we're actually, you know, the airport can run 100 low lead forever. I mean, we're doing this for the public's demand, right? And we're trying to do this at the request of the public and their concern over lead. We're trying to be conscientious here, right? But I mean, we're legally, as Mike said at the meeting, hey, people can have the, it's not illegal to put leaded aircraft fuel in your airplanes. I mean, you can, they can continue to do it. The, the, now in November, so I want to get back to now what we need to do next. Back in November, we put forth a motion for engineering um, and the engineering was approved um, by the city up to $30,000, I think it was. The, um, it was never acted on. I mean, I've, the city's, you know, first, you know, we have legal involved and city contracting and Honestly, the city is not really set up to handle this kind of a, a project with estimating fuel tanks and whatever it is. So I, I've had a discussion with the Bureau of, of, of uh, Aeronautics with Josh and others, and they were gonna go back, even though it was not a fundable project, there are ways to fund it. And they went to back, uh, uh, we're going back to the director of the Wisconsin Bureau of aeronautics to see if we can make this an 80-20 project. Um, if we can do that, my I'd, li I'd like to make a motion that we just hand the project over to the Bureau of Aer Aeronautics um, on a 2080 basis. Um, I, 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 may, I, I talked to the uh, city administrator about it. I said, I really think this is the best way. You know, you're really, it's gonna take legal fees and contracts and all of that. And, um, and I would request that the 20% be paid by the city um, out of the city's budget. So we would use that 30,000 and then there may be some additional funds, but it's a lot cheaper than the, than the city trying to uh, allocate money for buying tanks and other kinds of things. So I'd like to make a motion that we turn uh, well, over. I, I, I like the idea of. Go ahead. 
Uh, I like the idea of giving to the Bureau of Aeronautics. That's a great idea. And, uh, but I, I think, uh, I don't know if the city council will go along with that, that the city should pay for it because this is the enterprise fund. And I don't know if Mike really, um, or city council would agree to that. What do you think, uh, Robert? I think the $30,000, I'd have to go back and double check and maybe Mark knows off the top of his head, but the, the common council has already approved, approved $30,000 unless that was slated to come out of the enterprise fund, in which case we're back in this argument of which, which arm of the city pays for this. But if, 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 if it's, uh, if it's already money that's been allocated and approved, I don't see a problem with it. Well, the, I mean, Luke was going to put in a motion uh, for to buy the tank at a hundred thousand dollars. Sure. Um, and, and he didn't do it, which is it was untimely, um, and he knows that. But that was a motion that was going to be made. So uh, let me complete my motion and then see if there's even a second, and then then we could debate it, right? So sure. I would I would like to move that uh, the city um, uh, 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 allow the BOA Bureau of Aeronautics to take over the uh, project for the fuel the the modification of the fuel farm, and I would request that the city pay the twenty percent, which is estimated at at sixty thousand dollars, of which thirty thousand dollars has already been approved prior. Uh, for engineering fees, right? And um, I think it's, we're, like I say, we're, we're actually doing this for the public, not, just, not necessarily just for the pilots in the airport. I mean, we're doing it for the communities around us. Um, the airport can run just fine using 100 low lead. Um, we don't have to make a change, but if we're gonna listen to the community and make some changes, then then I think it's a broader issue. Sure. That's, that's my opinion. So um, would anybody care to second that motion? Uh, this is Robert Burke. I actually will second that. Okay. I do have so, a question. Could, could I, well, well, can we just clarify the motion quickly? So yes, John, I'm paraphrasing what I think I heard you say. This is based on what was noticed on the agenda. To request that the Bureau of Aeronautics take on the design, engineering, and construction administration for the field farm project with the city paying 20%. You know, that's where you lost, where I ran out of steam after you made yeah. the motion. Yeah, okay, so let me just kind of summarize what the project is we're asking them to take on. The Bureau of Aeronautics will take on the entire project. They will do the engineering, um, they will uh, get the quotes on fair market value of the equipment. Um, they will bid the project out. Um, they will project manage the project, right? And, and, and they will hand us a completed project. And the cost of that would be, uh, we pay 20% and they pay 80% per, provided that the BOA agrees to it and we'll have to ask an, uh, Josh for an update after we get done with this, right? And so the city, the project was estimated at, at 300,000 and 20% of that would be uh, 60,000. The city has already allocated $30,000 for engineering. Uh, there was a discussion that Luke was gonna ask for another 100,000. Um, and so this would be a lot less money um, and would meet the needs of the community and it would free up the city from having to deal with uh, contracts, uh, estimates, uh, and all of the other parts of it and just turn it over to the BOA who's, who's more than qualified to do the project. This, that, that's the long form. If you want to shorten it, Mark, that's the into a short form. Um, that's, that's it. Yeah. I think, I think we need the short form just for yes. motion. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted just to clarify Mark what, what it was. So the, with the city's 20% share coming from the airport enterprise fund. No, it come from the city. Or, or, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> we just want to. I, I'm looking up several different sets of minutes and, and doing trying to do too many things. So with the city's 20% share mm -hmm. estimated at 60,000, but that's on top of the 30, it's not on top no, of the 30,000. No, no, it includes. It includes the 30,000 previously authorized. I might add that as a note separate from the motion, unless you want it as part of the motion, but including the previously 60,000, 60, 60, okay. Yeah, so the previously authorized $30,000 would apply to the 60,000. Right. Correct. Right. The city's 20% share coming from, what funding source are you recommending then? I, listen, I don't know the pockets of the city. Well, I, I was asking. I, right. I, 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 all I could say is it would be, it would not be coming from the enterprise fund. And frankly, I don't know who in the world figured out that this place was self-sustaining. I mean, if you look, our, our income sources are fixed. There's absolutely no, if it wasn't for the gifts that we've got recently from Bill and others, we would be so far underwater. I mean, I, I, we wouldn't even be able to use a snorkel. We'd need full scuba gear. Um, I know this will be overruled, but I, we could just say the, the general fund and then, you know, that's not going to fly, but I don't, I don't also don't know where it's going to come from, but what we're basically saying is, uh, to be uh, from a coming from, a, or, or a fund to be determined by the, the, the finance group, but we're, we're not offering it to be the enterprise fund. So I would start with the general fund and then there will be pushback and then there a discussion can be had. Yeah, it becomes from some from from a city fund other than the airport enterprise fund. And that's to be determined by the finance committee. Yeah, that's the only, the only thing right? I can see is the TIF money, but I, I don't think it can come from anywhere else. But yes. Mark, uh, where was that 30,000 going to come from? Well, I was looking for, uh, the resolution that was approved, but this is just a resolution to, uh, this was just the federal resolution. So I was looking for the minutes of um, the previous meeting. And I also, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, have information for you regarding the survey, if you wanted to go back to that item, but we can do that after this. Okay. Um, so I don't know if, was that at the same meeting? Does Robert or Gurdip, do you remember? So this resolution, was it before that? I meeting? don't recall. It was. Um, oh, I don't know either. Because, oh shoot, it's got to regenerate. I hate this. It takes about thirty seconds to do this. So um, I'll look at the minutes of the meeting here in a second. But in the meantime, um, would you like to? Can, can I brief you on the other item with the survey? Do you mind going back to that? Uh, well, can we can we complete this one first and then? That's, well, it's just there's right now. I, oh, there we go. Um, so I think the minutes of. Let's see here. This was probably under recommendations or proposals. Um, let's close session. There's an unleaded fuel implementation I saw down below. Oh, it's a resolution. That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, um, no, that's okay, so this is just the resolution um, that didn't identify funding. I think there was a separate, there must have been a separate motion in November. Uh, let's go with this agenda, the, the 16th of November. Um, and that might've been a recommendation then. Miscellaneous, no. Uh, resolutions, I don't see it there either. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, I don't remember dates like this very well. <laughs> well, so I you do the we research after the fact. Yeah. I mean, we can make our motions and then uh, yeah, all can sort it out. I think I made it. I made my point on the other. We can't budget. We can't do anything if if if, if it's not in the budget and it's approved by the finance committee, right? There's some, and I can't believe that there's not a contingency somewhere in the city's funding mechanism to cover these kinds of things. Uh, we our, have a, our our entire contingency fund is I think under $50,000 for an entire year so it's it's 
if, well, if we're, I recall we, it correctly. We have a ten thousand dollar contingency fund, you know, just for the airport. So yeah. <laughs> you, you take a cue, do it, do it percentage. <laughs> yeah, I, the 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 problem is, where we have to run as tight as we do because, you know, it just it just works out that way. The, it's, okay, I, we I don't, don't have the money that we don't have. Yeah, I I I'm, I don't want to make a judgment on anything beyond the airport. So we'll make our motions and and plead our case and then um, see where it takes us. But um, if we're worth $30,000 to find out what people think, it's gotta be worth an extra $30,000 to solve the problem. Right. Well, we are here assuming here that it's gonna cost $300,000. So I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know even if we know that it will. And I think uh, you had negotiated or you, you talked to them rather than 30, it was gonna be 15,000 or 16, mm -hmm. uh, at least from when I was uh, going through the minutes or going through the materials. So mm -hmm. so, so I, I don't know, we need to know. <laughs> well, we'll, well, when, we hand, when we hand it over to the Bureau, the Bureau will, will, uh, will, will, will take it over and do their estimates. I mean, we we talked to each of the individual people. We talked to the manufacturers. I mean, we've done pretty much everything we can do um, to get the prices. And that number of three hundred thousand actually has some fudge factor in it uh, of a probably at least fifteen to twenty percent over what we really think it's going to cost. Because that number included thirty thousand dollars worth of engineering, and the engineering was half of that. So, Josh, you are on the call. Is there something which you could uh, talk about here? Sure. What, would you like to what what part of this would you like to talk about? Uh, well, uh, and number one, that probably the bureau does this more routinely. You may have some idea that uh, how much in total it might run into. Yeah, I did one not too long ago at Platteville, and it was two 12,000 gallon tanks, and I think it was about six, six, six fifty somewhere in there. But that's so that, that, that's, okay. that's building an entire fuel farm, Josh. It's not that one was farm. totally no, that one was totally different. It wasn't building a fuel farm. It was it was a weird system where it was like delivered on a pallet. So. I actually have one going at Baraboo right now. I can look that up tomorrow and see what that one's going for. Does the BOA have the appetite um, to take this on on a on a on a twenty eighty project? Did did um, did, did, Dr. did Mr. Green act like he was interested? I don't. I think the answer to that is he didn't act like he wasn't. Okay. He just wants some assurances that if we take it. If we help with this, that it's going to last for another whatever it's supposed to last 30 years, or because there's a, a lot of times the insurance companies will kind of jump on you and say, you know, this tank's 30 years old, we're not going to insure it anymore. Rich, have you ever gotten anything like that? There's a 10 year I have not. Uh, we have no problem with insuring the tanks so far, but again, we don't have. Well, one might be 30 years old. I'd have to go back and look at that. But the other one was installed uh, in 2004. So, on, on surface tanks, the engineers tell me as long as there's no water in them and they're inspected uh, according to the, uh, the schedule of every 10 years, it's indeterminate how long they'll last. Oh, oh this was in a budget. This is why I'm sorry to interrupt. Sorry, I just had a brainstorm. Mm -hmm. This was a this was done as a budget amendment. That's why I couldn't find a separate item. Um, I did a search on thirty thousand. I'm sorry, sorry for interrupting. No, not a problem. Yeah, you know, I'm I, looking I at would... the Dells right now. The Dells was six seventy, and I'm Ooh, and next wow. question you're gonna be like, you're not, well, that's probably two twelve thousand gallon tanks. Um, so you all know steel is incredibly expensive right now. Yep. Well, we've got well, a 12 and a 10 out there right now. So. I mean, the, the, here's the issue. I guess we we don't have to proceed um, trying to modify the fuel farm. I mean, we can leave it as is. 
I mean, I think I would be happy to modify. I'm gonna look at, the, I look, at the, look at our stuff here a little bit. Um, I would be happy to modify uh, my motion to say that um, that the airport, if the city paid up to sixty thousand dollars of the um, cost, that we would take the rest out of the airport fund. So I, I can tell you now that I found the line item. It was in the airport enterprise fund, energy, uh, the design engineering for unleaded fuel, $30,000. This was November 16th. And it, it, I, re, I remember this very clearly now too. So uh, it just took a while to find it. So this was done as an expenditure of the airport enterprise fund, the $30,000. Uh, okay. Well, well you, as far as I'm concerned then, this is for the public good. I, I would recommend that we don't change the fuel farm and we just leave it as is. Yeah, I, 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 I would like to push the common council a different direction than that. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that it is in, as you stated earlier, John, it is in the, it's in the city's best interest. It's in everybody's best interest to move forward with this project. And if it's just a matter of where the funding comes from, then that's a battle to be had. But I don't want to just walk away from that battle. I want to have, I want to have that discussion, and I want to figure out how to fund this because I think this needs to move forward. Yeah. So I understand, I understand your statement, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want us to give up just because somebody says, well, we want to dump the funding, the the the, the payment of this on one particular group. Uh, I, I think that's still a, a, a point of discussion to be had. Okay. So do you want to make two motions? One is that giving to a bit of aeronautics and the second is funding because those are, those are two different things in any case. Yeah, I, good... I can go for, for one, but not the other. So it's up to you. It doesn't yeah, matter. I, I, I agree. So let's, let's kind of go back. I, I, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think, I think breaking it into two parts might not be the worst. Uh, way to handle this. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll need to, before we authorize the BOA, well, first of all, they have to find out if they're willing to do it, but we, we need to figure out how it's going to pay for it because sure. I would want to start a project. I mean, I wouldn't do it at home. I wouldn't have my kitchen remodeled unless I knew how I was going to pay for it. Right? I mean, that sure. doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> so they really it's, it's going to be all subject to the funding well uh, here's here's how it works at the city level sometimes the city can commit to to funding something without necessarily knowing which which pocket it's coming out of the commitment can still be made but that is scarier i i hear your point john it's it's always better when um and I can't make that commitment. I can only you know, bring it to the common council and say, do we as a common council commit to, to funding this because that's required for the BOA to even look at this, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, but then, then the horse trading starts having to take place to figure out where's that money going to come from if we've committed to it. Well, I, you know, this is very similar to the debate we had with Stormwater Board. And that is, you know, we're obligated to uh, clear the brush and make sure that the grounds are in good order. But we, we the stormwater uh, issue of dredging and flow really is at the benefit of the entire community. It's not for the airport. I mean, the, air the planes can take off and land and the stormwater board acknowledged that. And they said, you're, you know, you're right. Um, we need to take a look at this as part of our stormwater infrastructure. We'll take the channels, the dredging, the engineering. You guys take care of making sure the banks are clear, uh, everything uh, else is associated. This is really kind of in that same category. Uh, it's not illegal for planes to use the leaded fuel. And sure. you know we can continue to operate in that case. 
we are doing this at the benefit of the community. I mean, I'm astounded. I mean, uh, the town of Middleton is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on reports about lead in the air. I mean, why you're better off just doing the work. Let's just fix it, right? And I'd like to see everybody, the government, just step up and say, hey, we can change 60% of this to tomorrow, but it's going to take some funds. Now, the airport commission could come to the party. I'm not, I mean, the airport fund can, can come to the party. And, uh, you know, if we say, look, at the city will cover 60000 If it's twice the cost, airport fund's going to have to come up with the other sixty. I mean, I think we could come up and do something like that, and we'll try to hold the cost down. But let's 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 try to let's try to create a motion that that mirrors that idea, John. Right now, um, and 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 I don't like starting a motion with an if, so I'm going yeah. to do it that way, and then and then have people help me figure out how to reword the motion. Sure. Well, let let me re reword the, the motion then, as I, sure. I just suggested. Right. I, I would move the request of the BOA takeover design engine construction of the fuel farm project. Right. Um, uh, and, and, and basically it's going to be to be financed on an 80 20 basis. Um, with the city um, paying up to two, up to sixty thousand uh, dollars. From the uh, uh, from the, from non airport funds and the balance to be paid for by the airport fund. Well, keep in mind that the 30,000 has already been allocated by the council from the airport fund. Well, they can well, be allocated because it hasn't been spent. But it's been authorized as a decision, uh, similar to the survey, by the way, since I, I've discovered- I don't, I don't know, how, you, how do you expect us to run the airport? I, I mean, I, I just about give. I mean, I, I don't know how you do this. I don't know how you take $108,000 worth of income, right? And then have people write $30,000 and $60,000 checks against it and expect us to balance the budget. Right. Or at least try to come close. I, it, I, it, I can't do it. I think that's very fair, John. And we need to obviously do a better job of having that dialogue with U.S. Chair and with the Airport Commission. And so I apologize for not, if, if we didn't, communicate that as well as we obviously didn't communicate that as well as we could have. So I will redouble efforts to make sure that that's that the airport commission is involved in that. But ultimately it's the council that makes the decisions. And I also wanted to quickly say that you made a statement that we have no evidence or no knowledge of how much money that the town of Middleton has spent. Um, it's, but I doubt it's in the hundreds of thousands and there's no evidence of that. So I just wanted okay, to- Well, I'm that. just, it's, so. and that's anecdotal and um, that's about, you're right. I have no uh, firm knowledge on what right. anybody spent for anything. I just wanted to. Uh, no, that's 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 fair. Okay. Um, it's just uh, it's anecdotal information. So, yeah, Robert, you want to add? I, to I'm just looking at. I want to read this. Uh, I'm just going to read it out loud. See if how it sounds. Um, to request that the BOA take on the design, engineering, and construction administration for the fuel farm project to be financed on an 80-20 basis with the city paying up to $60,000 from non-airport airport funds. Um, and I think we have to strike that, which includes the previously authorized right. 30000 I just hadn't done that yet, sorry. Um, and maybe, yeah, let's see, that might be all we need to say right there. Um, with the city's share being up to $60,000 payable, or yeah, coming from payable, whatever, from non-airport funds. I think that's, it's a good motion. Mm -hmm. And I don't know it's how, how, how the Common Council or the Finance Committee will react, but I think from our group, that is a very good motion. Yeah. And again, the option is to do nothing. It's the same as the airport, right? Sure. There's a do nothing option here. And, and uh, because it's not illegal for people to use 100 low lead. Right. Yeah. I, so, I, I, I can, I can bring, 
you carry I that can bring forward. That forward and have that discussion. But um, if that's what, if if you're willing to make that motion, I'm still willing to second it. Okay, and then then Mark, you and and the powers to be can look at how you're going to reverse out the twenty eight five and also the thirty thousand, which even hasn't even been spent. Right. There's no contract, <laughs> so. I don't know how you could take it out of the fund when it doesn't exist, right? So anyway, okay, so there's a first, a second. Any other uh, continued discussion? I have a question for Josh. Josh, do you know that uh, uh, which will be a cheaper option done by the BOE, Bureau of Aeronautics, or if it was done uh, uh, by the independent con contractor? And if it was done by the independent contractor, BOE would still pay for it? Um, no, we, if it comes through us, we have to go through that. We have to go through the bidding process. Oh, oh so, you do? Okay. okay. Yeah. So you already do so the bidding. One, All right. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm actually, I will have to figure out with you guys is it sounds like you said that you've already selected a consultant. Yeah. We have no contract. Okay. We have no, we have no contract. <clears throat> it was, it was recommended in November. It was funded, obviously, in November. Um, contract was forwarded, but you know, but it got tangled up, and uh, you know, legal need to look at it, and what's the city standard contracting form, and all of that, and so it's gone nowhere. And that's when I made a comment to the city's administrator that you're really not equipped to do this. We should just turn it over to the BOA if they'll take the project. And I've been actually texting Mark as we've been talking about this, and he says he has a he's talking to Dave tomorrow, so maybe I'll have more information tomorrow. Okay, that's great. So th thank you all for your comments and, and, and behind the scenes knowledge of how the process works. Um, but yeah, I, again, I wanted to reiterate, I if if John, if you're making this motion, I'll second it. If you're not making the motion, I'll 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 make the motion myself. No, I'll, I'll make the motion. You can second it. And if there's any other discussion, I mean, we can. Um, if there's any other discussion, please let uh, identify yourself and let us know. Yeah, and, this is another thing which I have to abstain from, so I'm not going to vote on it one way or the other. So. Okay. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I'd like to have discussion, Mr. Mayor. Why are you abstaining? Uh, well, I, yeah, I'm okay for the giving it to the Bureau of Aeronautics. The question is where it money, where the money comes from. So that's the question. I can't, that's why I wanted two separate motions. So I can't vote for right. that one. So. Right. But, but I mean, if you, you, but you're the one who wants us to, wants, wants lead to stop being burned at the airport. I yeah, mean, absolutely. you're the one who wants us to move forward with an environmental in initiative. You're the one who wants all of these things done. So you have to social so some kind of support for it. Yeah, I support that part, but uh, I, I still. Well, then uh, why don't you support paying a portion of it? Why well, doesn't the city support paying for this? Because the I, airport, I really don't understand. The airport I, I, is the, okay. Let me let me answer. The airport is the enterprise fund just like the golf course, just like some of the other funds which we have, whatever they do in the enterprise fund, it comes from there, that, that's why. So, so I think if you make a exception for one, you have to make exception for the others because for example, for the golf course, when, we, when the city paid for it, that was a loan and, and they had to pay it back. And uh, so if it's uh, come to the airport, we can do the same way where the, the, the airport would have to pay it back. So that's the reason. Well, the airport should have never been an enterprise fund. Well, I guess that's uh, another question to talk about, so. Well, I mean, it was, uh, there's no way on a fixed budget that we're living with, of, uh, you know, maybe um, $140,000 a year with the income and we're facing uh, rebuilding, you know, the airport needs to be overhauled and we have these social initiatives that we want to do for uh, stormwater management and we have a social initiative for uh, lead and it's just you, it can't be done I mean it's just obvious that the math doesn't work 
I would just well, caution you, you're going a bit off the agenda in terms of- I'm so, I mean, you know, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I, I mean, we have, a dis I'll, I'll let the uh, discussion continue, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all I'm really saying, Mr. Mayor, is, is that if, if we can't demonstrate support from the city to make this happen, then how's it gonna happen? Because as a commission, that's, like I said, we can just sit back and say, it, it's irrelevant. We will continue to burn uh, 100 low lead fuel and maybe in five years, uh, so, so the, how about we'll be able we... to move ahead with unleaded fuel and we'll just be able to drop it in the tanks and, and be done. But if we wanna do something now, then we need support to do it now. Otherwise okay. we just business as usual and uh, we save a bunch of money. We don't have to spend all this money on a fuel farm. Well, I don't want to repeat it again, but uh, we have to- I discuss. mean, it has nothing to do with a golf course. This, I'm just saying, this is just the airport. So either, either you're for it and you wanna get behind it as the city or you don't. Abstaining basically means you're not in favor of it. You're not gonna support it. Okay, let me answer you that we have to apply, we have to treat all enterprise fund the same way. You can treat one differently than the other. Okay, and, that's fine. I I completely understand. Yeah. So then what you're saying is you're not behind this particular well, initiative. I, what we will probably do is that find that we paid $50,000 from out of tech for this master plan. And that's probably where this money come from. That's why I don't want, want to make a commitment now. I will talk to Mike Davis and see where we can find this money. But, uh, you know, but it can come from general funds, period. I can't vote for that one at all. As, well, uh, you're, not as committing, a, you're not committing to any money on this. You're, what you're doing is you're committing to moving this ahead and saying you're in favor of us trying to make this happen financially, nothing I'm, else. I'm in I favor mean, of it. If you make a amend the motion that find a source of money, rather than saying that the city will pay for it, then I'm in favor of it. But if you just are making, you know, that uh, putting- May the I make a suggestion? Maybe make yeah. a substitute. Maybe the easiest way forward here from a parliamentary standpoint is to offer a substitute motion, Mayor, if that's what you would- Well, I, I, I'm happy with it not being unanimous. If the mayor wants to abstain, I mean, that's, that's his prerogative, but okay. this is specific. And I think this is the correct motion and it, it's seconded. I guess if somebody wants to do a replacement motion, I guess they could do that. But there's only two pockets here. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry for, for pushing it. It's just that I, I'm just expressing some frustration on my part, okay? And um, if everybody, you know, that, that, that's really all it boils down to Mr. Mayor is, is I'm expressing my frustration that you know, we, we've just been beat up over this, beat up, beat up, beat up that, that about lead and lead and lead and lead. Well, and, 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 and you're the mayor of the city. So, I mean, I think you have to put some skin, skin in the game and you have to drive this forward. If you're so, not gonna be willing to do that, then we'll just burn leaded fuel and we might as well save us money. That's all. Why, okay, why should sir. we spend all this money? Let's put it this way. We have that $469,000 coming for the uh, next four or five years, whatever that amount is. Could part of that money be used here? I, I think that, you know, look, at, if it's not financially possible to build this, I think the best thing to do is just we won't do it and we'll just wait until the fuel's available two years from now. And then we'll just change the fuels out and it'll, it'll, that's what it'll be. And I, I don't see a problem with that whatsoever. And I'm happy with just not taking the grief and, and not build, trying to build this thing. So, um, I mean, that's the option. And I think it's a viable one. If it can't be funded, it can't be funded. And then we just don't do it. So could somebody answer that? How is that 360, whatever that amount is, that money is to be used? Could that part of that money be used here? I don't Mr. Know. Mayor, that, that's another part of our budget. I mean, <laughs> that, that money is already put in place to build tax, rebuild taxiways, rebuild runways, and, and all the other infrastructure. The, the taxiway, that's 1.5 uh, one million, and the other is $1.2 million. So I think uh, 
and the the what, there are other sources which pay for most of it. It's not uh, um, paid by I don't know what percent it paid five percent. I, I really th I think we're really getting we're really getting too far off off the track okay, here. Well, fine. I, I mean that, I, that's I just part of that's that's another that's another. That's a whole nother part of our op the, the operation of budget. All I'm simply saying is, this is just a separate piece. This has nothing to do with the rest of that. And that if, 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 if we are going to move ahead with unleaded fuel, then we need, this, we need your support to make this right. happen. You're the mayor. Yeah. I well, mean, I have, you have my 100% support and I will work with the city council to find the source of money. And, uh, but I'm not going to make a, you know, commitment, what that source would be here now, I think the most possible source could be TIF money, but uh, you know, that's that's the reason I can't vote for one way or the other. I can vote for that, let's give it to the Bureau of Aeronautics and then let City Council find the money. So if you want to make that motion, I will go for it. We have we have nothing to give the Bureau of Aeronautics if we don't have the money. Well, <laughs> it's, really, I mean, it's that simple. Yeah, we're requesting that we're not specify where the city get the money. We're not saying it can't be TIF money. We're not saying much of anything. We're just saying that we need to secure the financing before this can proceed, because this is really an optional. It isn't like resurfacing the runways. I mean, we're obligated under our assurances to keep the facilities um, in, in, a, in a reasonable condition. We're not obligated under our assurances to modify the fuel farm for unleaded fuel. We can certainly wait. Um, there's no endangerment uh, findings from the EPA, right? And there's a big debate over that right now. We'll wait for that all to play out, wait for the fuels to play out. I mean, that is a viable option. It's, it's just to, to sit and wait. Um, and, and that's what we thought about originally, but there was so much pressure from surrounding uh, citizens and citizens of the, the city of Middleton to get the let out that, we thought that it was prudent to proceed this way, but it's not, uh, we, we just don't have to do it. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Let, me ask, one, let me ask one more question from Josh. Josh, what do you need, need from the airport commission here for the Bureau of Aeronautics to take over? Um, you, I guess. You, need, mm -hmm. you probably will need from the city, but uh, because it will have to go to the city council and uh, you know all approved. But what do you need in 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 I mean, totality? At the end of the day, I, it just has to be petitioned for, and then I need to know you want to move forward on the project. The only suggestion I would make to you guys is, I, I don't want you to wait if you don't want to, but we don't even know that Dave Green's going to say yes. Yes. That's the, there's your there's your roadblock right now. Yeah, but we could still try to allocate money, right? You, no, you could I do whatever I, you want. <laughs> I think right now the best motion is for the Bureau of uh, let both Bureau of Aeronautics take over. Once they agree to it, by that time we can bring to the city council and find some source of money. I think just just the recommendation for the Bureau of Aeronautics to take over. That's what we need. Keep in mind, this is a recommendation to the finance committee and the council. That's all you're doing. Ultimately, it's going to be the council that decides what to do with funding and, and all that. So. This is, yeah, this is not the same as a common council resolution or anything. This is, this is a recommendation, so. What I'm hearing is concern that the airport enterprise fund doesn't have the funds in it to to do this project. That's that's what's embedded in this motion, right, John? That was your intent. Yes. And, and, and uh, we're making a, so if you read the motion, we're making a request that the BOA take on the project. There's no guarantee that the BOA would take on the project. Right? So could we just do that part? And once they say they will take over, we deal with the second one? I, I don't think you can do it without the funding part. I mean, I don't know, Robert. Well, I mean, you second it. I mean, uh, yeah, I, Mr. Mayor, we can't do it without funding. I mean, I mean we have to. Do, I mean, why okay. not? Be trans, why not be transparent? And if the I mean, if the bureau isn't going to take over, you don't have the second second part doesn't even come over there. 
And by that time, we will have sorted out. Well, I think you could probably. Uh... So, so, Mr. Mayor, if the bureau doesn't want to take it over, it doesn't matter whether we, if we, if the bureau doesn't want to take it over, and we have the funding. Mm -hmm. Great. Then we'll go off as you recommended before, and we'll figure this out ourselves, and get our own engineers and contractors, and send it out for bid, and and uh, we will consult with the BOA to make sure we're on track with mm -hmm. spending a three hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure they would be happy to absolutely look over our shoulder. Well, I think you so that's a viable. Mm -hmm. Sorry, John. No, no, you no, you're. I'm, I'm trying to. Trying to figure out the wording here. I guess we could remove the from the comma out, and if you have something like subject to um, available city financing. Okay, I can vote for that. Right. So it says right. So it's basically request be able to take over the uh, engineering construction of the fuel farm project uh, to be financed on an eighty twenty ba basis, uh, subject to. And then they would just do subject to uh, the identification of uh, uh, city funding. That's that's about as nebulous as you can get. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I don't know if that changes much. And, and no, it, it, it does change a lot. Mark, Mark uh, Opitz, yeah. the uh, you have it right. Except I think you, I think. I think uh, John was suggesting that it also still contained the phrase to be fine. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. He said after the comma, and I just went to the first comma. Yeah, uh, second comma instead of the first. I mean, at some point, I'm going to be comatose. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, so we're requesting the BOA take over the design. They don't have to say yes, right? Or we're just making a request. And, and it's going to be financed on an 80-20 basis which we know that's what will have to happen. And then it's gonna be uh, uh, subject to the identification of city funding. And that leaves, that leaves all open. And if, and if I need to go to the finance committee and negotiate, I'm more than happy to do that on behalf of the airport commission. Josh, yes, one more question for you before we vote. That, is that the maximum uh, BOA will go for 80%. There is nothing like 90 or 95. No, after, the only thing after 80 is using entitlements, which is 95, five, but you can't use entitlements on this project. So 80, 20 okay. is as high as we'll go. Okay, thank you. So uh, the, the, the motion is out there. I will second this um, amended motion. Okay. Um, okay, first, second. So Discussion on the amended motion. David, you okay with this? I am, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Yeah, it's okay with me the way it is now. Okay. So we'll see where it goes, so. Okay, great. So um, we've got uh, any additional discussion? <clears throat> okay, if not, let's call the vote. Uh, all in favor of the motion uh, to request to be able to take over the design and construction administration fuel farm project to be financed on an 80 20 basis, subject to the identification of city funding. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, mo motion passes. You know. and, and I would note for the record that Kevin Munson had to leave the meeting. So he's okay, no so longer present. We're back. Okay. To okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Okay, next item. Um, this should be really quick. The TDS. Could, could we just, I'm sorry, John, could we quickly go back to the survey yes. item very briefly? I just had an update on additional research. I discovered that the finance committee minutes uh, in July um, indicated that's when they first took up the survey idea. And mm -hmm. that's when it explicitly stated funding from the airport fund. That was a motion recommended to the council. And then the council approved that motion. That was in July of last year. So what the minutes I showed you earlier were, were when they authorized the, the content of the survey, but not the funding. The funding was authorized in July. Yeah, I'd still like to, uh, to keep my motion in place. I, I understand it's not changing it, but I just wanted to yeah. okay. set the record yeah. straight. I mean, the, the thing about it is you're asking us, to, I mean, we're dealing with resurfacing and all these, and 
we can't do it if we don't have control over our fund. Yeah. Nope, I, it's duly noted, but I just wanted to, okay. I mean, the reason I was having trouble finding it, because I, I, I thought that had been discussed, that should have been discussed, and, and it turned out it was, so it was okay. July. All right, uh, I'm, I think I made my point. So moving on to TDS, uh, TDS has approved um, installing the fiber, but they need uh, uh, the approval to get access into the airport, and there's a form. Mike uh, asked that uh, we put this on the agenda and vote for it, um, that we give them the right to enter. The project is at their expense. There's no cost to us. We're gonna upgrade all the copper to fiber, um, and it will be available to everybody uh, in the airport. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve the TDS right of entry for equipment installation. If anybody okay, can I second it. Okay, and, uh, and the mayor seconds it. Uh, any discussion? The, and we can do this without um, interfering with anybody's activities at the airport? Uh, yes, we would ritual coordinate it. This Excellent. is just the right to come in. Perfect. Okay. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. opposed same sign. Okay, motion carries. John, I mean, uh, Robert, you don't see a need for that to go to council, do you? I mean, I, uh, I it's, don't. Uh, it's not, there's no cost and all that. I, as far as I'm concerned, I would just say that that's sufficient. I, I agree. I think okay. this body, this body can um, okay. approve this without the need of it going to council. It's not since there's no fiduciary, uh, there's no finan uh, financial component to it. Yeah, correct. I mean, I don't know if there's any legal, what, you know, I I'll like, double check, but I, I, you know, instead of saying you recommend to the council authorizing the right of entry, I, I you know, I, this is one of those things where it just, it seems like it's, it's, it's okay yeah. at the community level. Well, it just replace the word council with city, and that's all encompassing. Yeah. That could go to the administration, it could go to the council, it could go wherever you as our liaison and the city manager direct it. Well, your motion was to approve the TDS right of entry for equipment installation. That's why I flagged it, because you said just to approve it. And I, I think that's in order is what I'm saying. Okay. Great. Or we should, maybe I should just change it to recommend approval. No, no, I didn't, actually it's I didn't better. Mean to second guess, I'm just, I'm just wanting to, okay. I want a confirmation from Robert that he's okay. okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable that, that we can approve that. Okay. If I'm proven wrong, if the the if the city city uh, attorney or somebody says, well, really this needs fine, we'll deal with it then. Okay. Well, it's over to the city where we're, we're done oh. with that. Let's move on to the final piece here. I don't know and, if you did you vote on that. Did yes, we, we did. Vote on it? Okay. Didn't we? I could. Vote. I'll, I'll call the vote again. Yeah, yeah, oh. we did. It's unanimous. We did vote. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Five, five to zero, unanimous. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Their last piece is the airport face uh, covering policy. The BOA requires the airport sponsors have in place a face covering policy as a condition of receiving funding. And uh, I don't know if the city has a mask policy. Yes, we do. We do. Okay. So our, our current, I'm sorry, our current policy essentially is to comply fully with the public health Dane County, Public Health Madison, Dane County's policy. I, I was checking locally here, I mean, amongst my colleagues for, with Mike and our, our HR director, and they said that's the current policy. So I would make a motion that the airport face covering policy, um, uh, that the airport adopt uh, the city of Middleton uh, face covering policy. Okay, I second that. that. I mean, we are the city of Middleton anyhow. I mean, maybe we yes. just send on what we've got. I, yes, but I think to make it uh, official for the BOA, exactly. I think this is a good motion to make. It basically just says, yes, we're following the same as the rest of the city's current, poli current policy to comply with the public health Madison Dane County policy. Okay. So the, that the motion is that we'll, we, we adopt and we'll follow the city of Middleton's uh, mass policy. And we don't right. have to second. We have the, to the, mayor, the mayor seconded it. Okay. 
And Kevin Munson is back, by the way. Okay. So we have a. Did anybody second that motion? The mayor. No, I did. Yeah. Okay, great. The mayor second the motion. Um, any discussion on this item? Hearing none, let's uh, call the vote. All in favor of adopting the city's face covering policy for the airport, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Um, the only thing I have left for to, is for next month is since we have all of these matching funds and everything else and carry forwards of the airport managers uh, contract. And we have to rethink a little bit about the clearing. I'd like to maybe between now and next month, uh, put together what I see as potential changes to the budget so that people can have a heads up. Um, maybe by then we'll have some guidance uh, from the BOA on the fuel farm and we can take that to the next level. Um, and if anything comes up between now and then, um, if you let myself or Mark know, we certainly will um, get it on the agenda as appropriate. And I want to say, John, you did a, I saw your chairman's report. You did an excellent job. You put a lot, a lot of work into it and thank you for doing it. Yeah, my, those, my pleasure. And I think we serve a, a valuable job both for the airport, but we're also trying to be sensitive of the community and the community needs. So we're part of a, hopefully a bigger team. Okay, does anybody care to make a motion to adjourn? I, I make that motion, so. Okay, second? I'll second that. Okay, great. So we have a first and a second. Uh, any discussion on that? Hearing none, let's call the vote. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, okay, meetings officially adjourned, and I'd like to thank everybody for the uh, the great discussion and hard work um, to kind of move this stuff forward. Thanks, I agree, John. and thank you too, John. Okay, thanks, John. All right, have a, have a good evening.